to be very compelling spaces. So there's two different feature sets, right? There's just the fun everyday activity of a game that is, um, these are fantasy, oftentimes even sort of Tolkien or pseudo medieval narratives that draw people in. Um, sometimes they're sci-fi fantasy based and that's always attractive. Um, you get to play a different character, sometimes a different gender, a different, um, a different race of character, a whole different species. I mean, in, um, in Star Wars Galaxies, which is based off Star Wars, you could, play, you could play the fish people, you could play a Jedi, you could play all of these other characters besides yourself. So it's very appealing to people. Um, on a deep level, though, I think that these spaces really, um, I think they're deeply attractive to people because they're kind of meritocratic, so to speak. So they're spaces where everyone starts off with the same amount of stuff and that as you gain skill, you gain more. So you're rewarded for what you know. And, you know, as JC Hertz once commented about an arcade, she was saying, you know, um, many, many game spaces are really our levelers, so to speak. They level out sort of social, um, social status. They level out age. What matters is can you play? And so JC Hertz is famous for a quote where she said, you know, when, when you were at the arcade, it didn't matter what you drove there. Uh, if you sucked at asteroids, you just sucked, right? So it's that kind of idea. I think people find them attractive because you go there and it's clear how you can sort of make it to the next level or how to solve the boss monster. Now, that the most ironic part for me as someone in education is that these are spaces that require immense amounts of work, mm -hmm. immense amounts of problem solving, and a lot of negotiation because trying to get a team together to solve uh, problems in the game, dragons or what have you in the game for rewards that you have to divide up among the group, you can imagine the negotiation. It takes a lot of coordination. Yet people love to do this. So when I started studying them, my biggest question was, why do they love to do this in play spaces, but they hate to do it in classrooms? And it's so hard to get it to happen there. I've been studying it ever since.